ABSL Summit. Transform to thrive. Business survival through, cha uh, through change, thriving through transformation. Uh, we heard today a lot about data, but actually to bring data alive to life, you need processes. And processes are best if you automate them. And I'm happy to share with you some, some points of view and some ideas and some facts around intelligent automation. My name is Tina Seuchter. I'm responsible for Central and Northern Europe at SSNC Blue Prism. So I'm running this region. Uh, we have a lot of customers in Poland, uh, shared service centers from ABB, Nordea Bank, Electrolux, to name just to name a few. Um, we are also present with a little booth downstairs, so for those of you who want to know a little bit more, we are here for you. But um, first, really, let me start um, my presentation with a question. And uh, the question, you know the, how Menti works. So the question is really, I mean, all of you do some automation in your shared service centers. And uh, the question is really, what is the expectation of, about the outcome of your automation initiatives? Is it A, cost reduction? Is it B, improvement of customer's experience? Or is it top line revenue growth? So what are the answers? You know how it works. Yes, I see all the mobiles going up. You're scanning the code, and I'm quite excited to see what the outcome is going to be. So just a few more seconds. We will be surprised. So 65% uh, clearly expect cost reduction. 24% uh, uh, expect improvement of customer experience, which is really cool. I mean, shared services, of course, they're driven by cost reduction and efficiency. But also um, interesting to see that customer experience is key. And to me, customer experience is also similar to employee experience, because if you have the right technology in place to support your employees, the customer's experience will automatically be better. And that, of course, also leads to top-line revenue growth. So 13%, that's a, that's a great number. And um, thank you for participating in the, uh, the, the Menti questions. So um, um, the question today is really about technology and how it is helping you to achieve your best business results. This is some data from, from Accenture, uh, who made a, recently made a survey, survey to find out that 67% of enterprises uh, think about changing some vendors because of poor customer experience. Um, Top-line revenue growth is a big challenge today, particularly also in times where you have inflation. And as many customers, 64% uh, actually have um, targets for top-line revenue growth, according to the Everest Group. And also, they want to increase the profitability of their, um, their organizations. And then you have the economic uncertainty. 55% of the global domestic project, the product is the equivalent of 58 trillion US dollars are partly dependent on nature and external events. And I mean, I'm from Germany, I live in Munich, and some of you have, have read it in the news that the whole Danube River is flooded. So we have around 25,000 households today being affected. And um, so that means a big challenge to insurance providers, to healthcare providers. Uh, people have to move, be moved from hospitals. This is the unexpected. And again, this is happening more and more today. Also, the many companies are still, and similar to your presentation, Adam, uh, many companies today are really um, challenged by using technology in the right way. But yet, more than 80% of the enterprises will have some Gen AI technology in place by the end of uh, 26. And uh, all our customers today, without ex exceptions, they are using Gen AI in some work, uh, some way. Some are very advanced with the usage. So I think probably this statistic will be even topped. Again, the unexpected. You all heard it today from David, uh, the ex-CIA officer, who had the three recommendations for you. And recommendation number three was about operational resilience. 
That means you need to be prepared for the unexpected. What does that mean for our customers? Um, we have um, shipping providers like Hapag Lloyd, who use technology to reschedule ships in the Suez Channel because of the Suez Crisis. There was absolutely no way to do this with overnight without technology. Similar to the insurances who have a peak due to the water, uh, to do the floods in Bavaria or in other regions of the world, you, they need to be more resilient and they need technology for that resilience. And automation is helping customers to be more resilient. Last but not least, um, all enterprises are impacted by ESG. Um, CSRD uh, reporting is a mandate today and it can only happen with technology. If CIOs do measure their ESG footprint and their carbon footprint, they need to gather data, they need to analyze data. It's only possible today with technology and the combination of technologies. That would be automation as well as data management. So technology today is really helping enterprises and shared service center in particular to also respond to change, to be agile, and also to relieve people from mundane tasks, support them, improve the employee experience, and also then the customer experience. IDC, what? Um, IDC is predicting that organizations today ha have to reimagine their business models and their operation models. And um, they have to become more competitive, more e efficient, but again, it is about the employee experience, the customer experience, and also how you react to events. And now, what, is tech, what can technology do for you to cope with those challenges? So Forrester has found out that 76% of organizations expect to see positive impact for their business growth within the next two years from their automation programs. And that comes really back to the, the mentee question I asked about the cost saving versus customer experience versus uh, top line revenue growth. Everest found out that 60% of the enterprises in, in, uh, expect a higher impact in strategic areas, such as employee experience, such as customer, is a customer expect, uh, uh, experience. And again, good employee experience is a good customer experience. There is no differentiation from that. Um, so again, technology is helping customers to achieve this. Earlier in this year, uh, we at Blue Prism, we conducted a study with Forrester, who in the room are familiar with the total economic impact of Forrester. I don't see any hands raising. Okay, so Forrester has developed this brand, Total Economic Impact. It is a study they conduct in over 20 years, and it's analyzing the economic impact of technologies. So we uh, had a study earlier in the year conducted by Forrester. They asked about, uh, interviewed about 166 of our customers about what is the economic impact of automation. And the first finding was that it is really producing 5.4% revenue growth year over year. And that's a linear growth. That means in the third year, the growth was actually 7.8%. It also showed that 330% uh, ROI were achieved within the three years. That means six months payback. Adam, you've been talking about a CAO turning down um, IT projects. I think the point is really to have a very, very compelling business case and a good ROI, plus also have good business outcomes. So customers who use intelligent automation in the right way, they increase their customer base by 6%. And the next KPI is really important because it's easy to win a customer but to keep them loyal, that's a challenge. And if you reduce the onboarding time of a customer by 85%, that has a massive impact on customer experience. It builds the loyalty. And that also in, in instantly leads to higher revenue. So it is the whole journey which you, uh, which you can improve, the customer journey which you can improve for the better. And also, happy customers are loyal customers. 
customers who use automation in the right way also are able to retain their customer base by uh, increase their retention rate by over 7%. So this is really the, uh, we are more than happy to share the study with you. You can download it from our website. Also, if you go come to our booth later on, we can share some more facts about that. But this is really um, what we found out about our customer base. So intelligent automation is really helping customers, enterprises, shared service centers to deliver on their business goals regarding revenue growth, by attracting more customers and encouraging cross and upselling by increased margin. Because if you're faster, if you're more effective, your operational cost automatically will go down. Something which is not what you don't find here, but what we see and what also what I've been find have hit repeatedly in the discussion, also in shared service, talent is scarce. And for for you know. In, in order to be able to, to be more operative, you really have to have automation technology in place to, to, re, to replace talent, what you don't have. So it is also a capacity issue. And you can really uh, increase your capacity with technology and save costs and become more effective. And that all creates really new, better value. Uh, also, the employee motivation is going up and you have a better retention rate from your employees, and I don't need to explain you, that also implies that you don't have less, uh, that you have less onboarding costs, less training costs. So all these KPIs can also be improved with automation. Last but not least, you can minimize risk and ensure compliance, because important with automation is also that you have a governance in place, and governance and security is part of the Blue Prism DNA. In addition to that, we have customers in the financial sectors, for instance, who fully automate their regulatory processes. And that really saves them, uh, saves them from, from paying fines, right? So you have really, re you can reduce your operational risk by automating things which people don't like to do, which are tedious to do, which uh, require a lot of similar data gathering. And so enterprises can also reduce operational risk. Now, um, you cannot have a presentation today without talking about um, artificial intelligence or Gen AI. And of course, my next question is also coming to that. So we heard a lot about Gen AI today. We heard about the hype cycle, uh, about how to use it, the challenges around that. Um, and so similar to Adam's question already, how do you rate the impact of Gen AI on your own business? Is it A, positive? Is it B, B, neutral? Or negative? So there is a menti question here, and again, I'm excited to see the results. Many mobile phones are going up. So let's see what's happening. Some of seconds. Okay. So, oh, fantastic, 73% positive, 25% neutral, 3% negative. Um, of course, there can be negative impacts. And that is all also about the concerns around AI, Gen AI, and the matter of trust. And the question is really, how do you assure a good trust level when you use Gen AI technologies? And I'm not only talking about uh, ChatGPT, we have customers who are using um, uh, other LLMs. There are multiple LLMs on the market today. And the, the challenge today is really, how do you have the governance and the framework around your Gen AI, Gen AI uh, capabilities? How do you assure the right outcome? So we are having um, Automation or intelligent automation is really helping you ma maximizing the value of gen, uh, gen AI. So you can imagine that um, Gen AI is really the brain and processes are the muscle. So the, the right process and governance around your Gen AI, um, gen AI trials or Gen AI projects is really assuring a right, the right outcomes. So 
we help you to really automate the more complex processes end-to-end -end around Gen AI. And, and you see this on the next slide. We really help you to generate the right outputs. And actually, this is the, what we see as the biggest challenge in over 150 customer conversations with our customers is really, how do you curate the data? How do you assure the right data input into your LLM? That could be ChatGPT, it could be any other LLM, but the question is how do you curate the data from structured and unstructured uh, systems, from uh, records, from paper forms? So the challenge is really the generate, generation of the data and the curation of the data and have that with a perfect audit trail. You then need tools to engineer the prompt, and the prompt needs to be very precise because if you have the right data generated and the right input prompts, that assures you really the right result and outcome. And in this journey from prompting and data generation, you also want the humans interact with your system. So the human-machine cooperation is really what makes your data or your Gen AI journey more effective to make decisions, to assure quality. So the journey is really about the generation and curation of data, the engineering of the prompt to make it very precise, the request and also the, uh, the integration with the humans in the loop, and that assures you the result. And of course, uh, we, and to give you an order of magnitude about the results, we have legal departments who start, who, whose ambition is to fully automate the processing and generation of contracts. Think about the value for an enterprise because lawyers are highly paid and usually they're just generating text and retext. This is a big impact on the productivity in some areas of enterprises. So, um, we've seen the McKinsey figures already in Adam's presentation, so I don't have to read that to you again, but and Gen AI is really bringing, bringing massive impact on the market and the combination of uh, intelligent automation and Gen AI is helping you to achieve the best results. So um, again, you're curious, you want to learn more, happy to welcome you on our booth downstairs on the first floor and happy also to answer your questions later on. Thanks a lot. <laughs>